<clears throat> what are the three most valuable commodities that each and every one of us have? Is it influence? Well, influence can bring value to some, but we also know that influence can actually be negative, as in the case that we've seen in historical of war. But what about knowledge? Well, knowledge is valuable to certain people who need it, but as Einstein once said, imagination is more powerful than knowledge. How do we harness our imagination? Well, what about money? Money is a great resource. It allows us to purchase and to attain all the things that we require to achieve our dreams. But without these other commodities, money is worthless. We need to have time. We need to have energy. We need to have attention. Now, time is finite. We all have 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In fact, if you're at if you're outside at midnight and the clock strikes and you're looking for more time, they'll probably come and take you away <laughs> to a safe place, likely with padded walls. Well, what about energy? Energy is something that all of us want. Energy is the fuel. It allows us to go after the thing that we want. It allows us to have that drive. Well, energy is fantastic, something we're all looking to. But what is the connection between time and energy? And that is attention. Attention allows us to keep on going, to work towards that goal, and regardless of all the distractions that are pulling us away from the thing that we're trying to achieve, it's our attention that allows us to get there. Now, how is attention cultivated? Well, after doing some recent studies, looking into attention, it appears that mindfulness practice and meditation are two fantastic ways to develop our attention. And studies from Harvard University, conducted by Sarah Lazer, uh, proved that after uh, participants are going through a mindfulness or meditation practice for a period of eight weeks, there are regions in their brain that physiologically grow and get bigger. Regions such as the prefrontal cortex, the front of our heads, which is responsible for working memory and executive decision making, as well as the uh, Temporal parietal lobe, right above the ear. This is responsible for perspective and empathy and compassion. And as well as our hippocampus, right in the center of our minds. And this is responsible for learning. And it's also responsible for emotional regulation. Now, all of these things grow with meditation. But what's also so interesting is that another area of our brain shrinks. That is the amygdala. Many, know, many of us know this as being the fight or flight response and allows us to build stress. And it was very useful when you're trying to get away from, say, a saber-toothed tiger or something that was in the woods. But now, <coughs> our amygdalas are firing all the time. And the people that were in these studies, they reported their stress levels were going down as their amygdala was shrinking. And there was a direct correlation. Now, all of this sounds great on paper. But as we know from the Chinese proverb, that which we hear, we forget. That which we see, we remember, but that which we do, that is what we understand. And I wanted to understand this. I wanted to understand this concept of mindfulness and meditation. And that led me to just come back from a 10 day intensive mindfulness meditation retreat of in Montebello, Quebec. When I say intensive, it was intense. And why would I want to go there? I wanted to dive in head first and experience this and live through it. And when I showed up there, April 27th, I didn't know that I was going to involve myself and endure what would be ultimately one of the most rewarding but also difficult experiences that I've ever been through. Now, why was it difficult? Well, every single morning at four o'clock, we would wake up and 12 hours per day, dedicated to mindfulness and meditation. On top of that, breakfast and lunch, there's no dinner. You can have a piece of fruit if you'd like. For 18 and a half hours of the day, the bodies were fasting. To top it all off, this was a silent meditation. No eye contact, mm -hmm. no speaking, no physical gestures with any of the other students until the 10th day when we were able to speak again. Now, I say it was very difficult, and it was, but there were so many things that were excellent and awesome and just allowed us to get through and allowed it to be manageable. And for one, 
As you're sitting there, and as I was sitting there, what I experienced was the first few days my mind was racing. Where else could I be? What else could I be doing? My mind was just exploding on me. When I noticed that on day four, these thoughts started to settle and they started to shrink. And all of these kind of crazy out there, not even important thoughts that I was having, I was realizing that I could just discard them. And I started to see the things that were more important to me. And these were the things that continued to come into my mind. It allowed me to really realize what is important to me. And not only was that a breakthrough moment, but what allowed me to get through it was also being around 50 other individuals who were all going through the same thing. And even though there was no communication, there was still the sense that we were all in this together. And every night, we were able to listen to a one-hour discourse from the Indian instructor, S.N. Goenka, and he had words of wisdom. And no matter how hard the day was, he would pull you back out, and he'd give you a reason to believe that you're doing the right thing. Even though on day seven, I was asking myself, what am I doing here? It was very difficult. I thought that my mind was starting to snowball. I thought I was starting to move backwards, but it started to settle out. And by the end, by day 10, when we were able to start talking to people again, there was this feeling of bliss. You get to speak with all these people from all walks of life, all different parts of the world, why they were there, what their purpose was. It was an amazing experience. I think that for me, the most difficult part was not being able to speak to anyone because as you guys probably know, <laughs> I like to speak a lot. That's why I'm up here. That's what brings me to these events. And I had two other roommates and on day five, my one roommate, he left. On day eight, my other roommate, he left. I don't know if I was snoring, but <laughs> they certainly couldn't tell me, but I don't know why they, they left. And I, I lost that that support, but at the same time, I still had the support of so many. There are so many things that were learned from this experience, such as the, the mind-body connection, and we harbor these emotions. Like say, we're super stressed, so we tense, we're, we're upset. It goes in through the muscles of our body, it goes into our mind, it's all connected. It's all one piece. Or say we're watching a YouTube video of little kittens, and we're like, oh, relax, be soft, mind-body connection is so strong. And I have to give gratitude to the man who convinced me to go to this retreat. His name is Claude. And not only did he convince me to go, but he coached me through it. I met with him before, and I met with him after. And it was probably, it was one of the most foundational, one of the most changing events I've ever been through in my life. Now, how can one benefit from this mindfulness practice? Well, studies prove that after only 10 minutes a day, we can, we can obtain these benefits. And the reason that I seek to go to this program was because I felt that I was in a time of transition. And I realized that we're all in a time of transition. <laughs> we're always changing. We're always becoming. We're always evolving. And who can't benefit from better learning, better memory, better ability to deal with emotions and regulate all of the things that are going on inside of our head. I think that's something all of us can benefit from. In 10 minutes, it's as short as brushing our teeth in the morning and at night, being mindful of our breath, coming in and going out. That's all. All it takes is three ingredients. Time, just a little. Energy, just a little. And attention, just a little. You gain such profound 